Anderson, who is the chamber president, yep, Kim Anderson, will be moderating, right, you're moderating tonight? Actually, no, Gordy, I'm not. I had the privilege of moderating the event last week between the state senate candidates and the state representative candidates. I wish I were moderating the event tonight, oh, but sorry. I believe, Jeez, I thought you were moderating I believe all it's going to be Pat Rice. I'll be there, so if they want me to be, the, if they want me to moderate, I will happily do it. I think it would be a great, enjoyable thing to do. How did the last forum go? You know, it went well. There was a nice turnout, and uh, really intelligent questions that came from the audience. I like the format because the women of the AAUW host the event, um, and they have it very well organized. So people that are there can write questions, and then the women uh, on, from AAUW gather the questions and kind of group them by topic and, and then pr uh, present them to the moderator so you can uh, kind of combine some questions so that you can get to more topics. And um, we had a nice turnout, and uh, we offered uh, the opportunity for the candidates to really kind of debate one another, but we did it in a Minnesota nice way right. and not necessarily in the the way that we're seeing on the national stage right now. Well, that's not a true debate. No, no. And neither did we have a true debate. It was more of a forum with an opportunity for some feedback. But uh, I believe that those that uh, were in attendance or watched the forum on FCTV uh, learned uh, quite a bit about the positions that the candidates have on important issues that affect well, our yeah, area. Congressional candidate Jim Hagedorn on the show earlier this week. Okay. And he said the event, uh, the YPRO event, yes. went well. It did. They had a, also a very nice turnout. Um, you know, when you have that many candidates in a lunch, the opportunity for each one to speak and for any kind of Q&A was very quick. And yet there was that time for the candidates to mix and mingle with the uh, folks that were in attendance and uh, we've heard great feedback. Particularly heard how appreciative the YPRO participants were. Now YPRO is our young professionals group and they're, they're typically you know in their 20s and 30s and some of them are very very well versed in the political scene and understand it all but others are just thinking you know what maybe I ought to be paying more attention to this and so they appreciated the candidates who spoke about the primary responsibility of their office and understanding how that all aligns with Congress and then Senate and then the House of Representatives. I mean not everybody maybe paid that much attention in civics class in school and so it's a night it was a nice event um, I think the candidates and the participants that were there really enjoyed it well then I misspoke earlier today I apologize for that I thought you were moderating all the fun. I wish I were I didn't mean to slight I'd Pat love Rice to. no Pat Rice is wonderful she's a member of that organization right. and I believe she will be moderating today and then a week from today the school board candidates will be on the stage and um, I believe Cheryl Freund is the moderator for that for that uh, event. I although long time educator. Yes, um, with you know great um, understanding of the issues on the school district level, as Pat Rice would have as well on the city level, having served so many years as a city councilor. Yeah, that's tonight at seven at Faribault City Hall. It's free. Right. It's free and it's a great event and really easy to participate. If you have some questions for the mayor candidates or the city council candidates, you can write them down and bring them in or you can think of them on the spot and turn them in uh, during the forum and, and the moderator will see that they get asked. Okay. There's another event coming up too on October 26th and that's an open house type event that the uh, South Central College Student Senate is hosting at the college from 5 to 7 and it's kind of kind of an open house expo style event where people can just come in and and visit with the candidates that they would like to visit with. Yeah, I kind of like that format because yeah. you can go get your questions answered and leave. Right, yep. I've just sent through a few hours of questions and maybe you're not able to vote in that race or or you already have made your decision and and this is a way for you to just focus in on the races you want more information about. All right, Jim Anderson, the president of the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce. I love saying that, the president. <laughs> I can tell you like saying that, Gordy. It's <laughs> with us today. And that's kind of overblown. I'm just working there like my colleagues and we're having a great time doing it. Well, I'm sure you are. Anyway, 
Tom Hartman, by the way, our good friend Tom yeah, Hartman will be here tomorrow oh, wonderful. talking about the Faribault Sports Hall of Fame oh, inductees this year. Such a nice event. Yep, their yeah. banquet is next Friday. Okay, next coming Friday. up quick. And yeah. we'll get all the details from Tom tomorrow. Monday, I actually got the executive director of the American Red Cross. Oh. M Melanie Cheetah. I think we with. have a blood drive that day in town as well. Anyway, Melanie will be with us on Monday, which is National Boss Day, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to think about that. You get something for your chamber board, I suppose. Maybe so. Yeah. Will you do something for your boss that day? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. AUW will be with us on Tuesday, by the oh, way, good. talking about a Halloween breakfast that's coming up. Oh, my. They've got a lot going on then. And from the Orthopedic and Fracture Clinic next Wednesday, Dr. Munch will be in studio. We'll take your questions. You always enjoy it when people text in their questions. Oh, it's a nice. great method. Yeah. In fact, I ask people to text us their solutions to the downtown parking pro problem oh. uh, today. We'll see if we get any text messages. But you have some other information you want to go over before we tackle. Well, we did, uh, before the break, we talked about the election. So I just, I just want to make a couple of points. On the Chamber's website, we have some... Uh, videos that we've produced with all the candidates. So there's a, a video conversation with the Senate, the state rep, uh, the county commissioner races that affect the Faribault area, the mayor candidates, the school board and city council candidates. So uh, there's a lot of information on the chamber website and it's another one of those formats that you can do when you want and just take a peek at the particular races that you want and fast forward if you're bored with a question. It's, we feel like it's a really good format for people to just exercise some interest in the race. Um, we have all of those videos closed captioned so if you know of anybody that uses that service or would uh, prefer to watch that uh, with that service we would encourage you know, just click on that CC at the bottom of each video and, and they become closed caption for you. So we enjoy doing those conversations and those videos and then posting them and making them available on our website. And that was by request, the closed captioning. Yes, and we appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's one of those things we should be more attentive to, especially in Faribault, but in our um, rush, I guess, to do things, we sometimes uh, forget about that important thing. So we're very pleased that uh, we got the request so that we could make that available to anybody who wants that. Is there a grant or something? Is there an expense involved in doing there that? There is, or? yes. It's it's considerable expense, but we didn't have the time to apply for any grant oh, or to, okay. and we just absorb the expense. All right. Well, yeah. maybe in the future that can be right. accomplished. Something we can maybe find a sponsor for or whatever. But you know, the election is coming up in just not that very long. Less and than a month. one of the one of the new um, uh, situations with the election is the ability to uh, vote early, and that's kind of changed the course of things a little bit because you know in the past and we all went to the poll, we got our little sticker that said I voted and and the numbers are ever increasing about those that want to vote early. So that's news for candidates as well that you can't just count on people to wait till the last minute to decide. They're deciding, going to the polls now. They don't need a reason. You don't need to be out of town or out of medical situation. You just, if you're ready to vote, you can vote. And uh, I'm not sure I like that, to be honest, but it is open and available to people. So um, we're learning that more and more are doing an early vote. Yeah, well, it should lessen the lines at the polls on Election Day, too. There's some positives involved there. Maybe so. Right. I like the, I like the feeling of going to the polls. It just feels like it would be really different to do, to vote in a different way. But um, I'm showing my age when I say that. <laughs> Well, you can still do that. Why not? And I will. Yeah. I intend to, right? Yeah. So will I, because it's a good time for me to find out what the turnout is like. Sure, so right. So I can yeah. report on how the turnout is that Will day. you be able to report on the numbers of people that did vote early? Is that something that... Oh, sure. Um, we'll have that number. You know, even sure. prior to Election Day, yep, to yep. know that a few days ahead of time, like maybe already 20 or 30 percent of the yep. people will have made In it. In fact, we already had some numbers we've given out. Okay. Good. Good. It's popular. It is popular, right. And it won't necessarily mean that we get our numbers quicker either because ah. that'll slow down the process in terms of the count, as I understand it, from Fran Winchettle, who's going to be on this show before the election to talk a little bit about that. Good. That'll be interesting to hear more about the, how that works and the popularity of it and how that will 
affect those um, results that we're all eager to get on election night. And we live in a microwave, I call it a microwave society, <laughs> one thing's instantly. Instantly, you know that, yeah. yeah, that's for sure. You know, uh, that kind of leads me to the conversation that we had yesterday with a group of people we call our advisors. Our advisors are, are uh, people who have previously served on our board. And we had a group of about 18 uh, people who served on our board in the past. Uh, join with a few of our current board members, uh, Joe Cullinan from uh, hy V, he's our current board chair, and Nick, um, Nate Shapi, who's um, going to be our chair in 2017. And they met with these past board members just to talk about how are we doing as a chamber? What is the, what is the value proposition that we have? What, what's our relevance? Uh, the book that uh, that I'm using to guide these conversations is called The Road to Relevance. And, you know, in a Google world and a, and a everything on your, on your phone world and um, Facebook groups that draw people together, what can we as a, a over a hundred year old organization do to make sure that we remain relevant and important in the business community? And uh, we got some tremendous feedback from the people that attended the meeting yesterday and our board will be working on those kinds of issues in the year ahead. That sounds interesting. It is really interesting. So for example, we asked we asked the, the people that attended the meeting, when you hear the words Fairbow Chamber, what word or phrase comes immediately to your mind? And we got some great feedback about that, about advocacy and pro-business and involved and inclusion and dedicated and that kind of thing. So we were pleased to hear that. But then you ask, you know, what are the distractions that we have? What are the things that might get in the way of us being effective? And, and uh, we talked about, you know, a number of things that we have to do, like listening to our critics, understanding what the downsides are or what the obstacles are that people might have or, or perceive about being involved in the chamber. So I think it's good to share uh, that we are thinking about those things and understanding that um, what was valuable to boomers or perhaps, you know, thinking about that old um, advertisement about this is not your grandfather's whatever, that w we are trying to be relevant and change with the times and, and become an organization that that young business people and the next wave of owners and, and community leaders will be attached to. Think how much the times have changed since you started as the head of the chamber. Right. I mean, in 1999, it, you know, there a lot has changed, a lot. I mean, the world of social media has changed the civility and the discourse of of almost every public arena because it really it really wasn't prevalent then and and you could expect that there were pockets of people um, having conversations we would tease about where we could find out all the right information about town might have been this coffee shop or that one but now it's all out there in a way that it becomes um, a force to be reckoned with and sometimes that can be very negative it's not always negative right. it can be very helpful as well but my personal experience about it is that it tends to be negative and uh, we need we need to continue to be positive and be looking for solutions rather than just ways to put people down or complain yeah speaking of that you've been on the council I have and so I thought it'd be cool to get your opinion about the downtown parking issue. I've been here, it'd be 30 years in June, and I remember a number of ad hoc committees or, right. you know, right. mayoral task forces. Oh, there's a, there have been downtown. a lot of them. There have been a lot of them. And, and I think it's appropriate that those kinds of things bubble up from time to time because there are new ideas, new solutions, maybe even new problems that need to be reckoned with. So. Um, yes, there is another parking committee, and I think that they will be dealing with uh, trying to understand what solutions might be out there. I think they'll find similar things to what other studies found, and we definitely will be dusting off the previous studies. And there's a tremendous resource also available um, from the Minnesota Main Street organization about 
best practices in downtowns for parking. But some of the problems are difficult. For example, employees of downtown businesses tend to want to park, like we all do, close to where we work. Sure. So the employees of downtown businesses are parking in those prime spots in front of the stores where customers are looking for a place to park. So how do we address that? Can we, can we dedicate some public parking areas for employees? Can we make sure that that's a safe and friendly pathway for people? That might be one thing that the group could look at. Um, another thing that I know past parking studies has addressed is the tenants of uh, housing above downtown stores. So where do they park? You know, they may work at night and be home all day sleeping, or they may have uh, changeable shifts. It's, it's hard to know. There's a lot of people that live downtown, though, and they need a place to park. That's their home. So how could we, how could we manage that? Could we require uh, people who have rental housing downtown to have dedicated parking for uh, their tenants in a public lot, maybe where they would get a number and they would, li uh, they would that would be their spot, and there would be a fee attached to that that I'm sure would somehow have to be connected. But you know, I, I think that those are the kinds of things that have certainly been talked about in many of the past studies, but maybe the political will wasn't there to say, yeah, let's do that. So we'll see. What I will say is that each time a study has been undertaken, improvements have been made. Ideas have come forward that have maybe changed where the 15 minute spots are or helped improve the accessibility for people that um, need handicapped accessibility on the sidewalks. Um, maybe there have been some adjustments made to the length of time. I mean, every single study had its outcomes that were valuable. Um, there's going to be another one, and I'll predict there'll be another one, and another one after that, and another one after that, because that's kind of the nature of community development, right, is we never really get done. We just keep working on things. Yeah, that's true. Kim Anderson is the president of the Faribore Chamber. She's our guest on AM Minnesota today. Again, tomorrow, Tom Hartman, our good friend, will be stopping by to talk about the Faribore Sports Hall of Fame. They have another class going in next Friday. That's just such a great event. I'm so pleased to see that continuing so strongly. And then I see that there's a group of retired teachers, and my, it's probably their organization is called something else, but they're looking on uh, doing a Hall of Fame for alumni of Faribault, High, of Faribault schools that have achieved other great success outside of sports. Oh, yeah. And I think that's just a wonderful thing to help even current students see you know, what you can achieve and, and what a great foundation of education and sports involvement and community involvement you can get growing up in Faribault. Yeah, I've often thought the same thing, that you know, it shouldn't just be an athletic Right, and there's a place to honor the athletes, but, but I love the fact that there's a new initiative coming along to honor maybe, you know, scientists well, or musicians. musicians or who knows what. It'll be wonderful to see that group um, develop that program, and it'll be a good one to, to participate in and see those students that have done so well. I'm you sure look, there are a lot of them. You look on the wall there on, on Faribault High School, and there have been a lot of all-state orchestra or whatever. Right, they and what do, they, what do they go on and do? You know, where do they where do they perform? And there's, I think it would be really interesting. Yeah, I'm sure they went on to some musical career in college or something right. too, so right. they should be recognized. Right. I've often thought that. Well, somebody is working on that now, so that's good. That's good. Yeah, there's a lot of good things in this community. Just last week we had a wonderful event thinking about students where we had manufacturing representatives at tables with students talking about what kind of jobs are available in manufacturing. And, and a lot of times parents and, and community at large will think, oh, manufacturing, you know, that's going to be smokestack, dirty. These are high tech, very interesting uh, careers. And you can make a great living in jobs and uh, pursue a career that will take you perhaps from being on a manufacturing plant to uh, becoming more of a, of a 
in the management team or, or there's a lot of ways that that can go but we're really pleased with that event we had about a hundred students and about 20 manufacturing representatives and uh, we were really happy with that the students got a chance to tour some places too and so it was a fun day so the stewards the students that were involved did they volunteer to participate? Is that how that worked? Or? Uh, through their teachers, uh, particular classes go because they have curriculum attachment to the event. So it's like they, a physics class might go to learn about something that's going on in a particular manufacturing. So um, in a way they are selected by their teachers based on their uh, st what they're studying in the classroom. If you get a chance to visit with any of the students, I'd be curious to hear what their reaction would be. Well, they're always they're always surprised uh, at what they see, um, and and we are doing a, a evaluation feedback, so we will be getting more information from the students. But they love to see the actual plants in operation, and they're always amazed at the technology that they find and the the cleanliness of these workplaces. Because you know, you think about when you drive by a big manufacturing facility. You know, you don't get much of a glimpse of what goes on inside, and you don't even know what they're making. Uh, one of the things that we were really happy with is we produced a, a video called Made in Fairbo, and we are highlighting the different manufacturing uh, locations in town and trying to show in just a quick and fun way what they make. Again, trying to appeal to that young audience and getting them to say, wow, I wonder how they do that. I wonder how they make that. I wonder if I could get involved in a career like that. And it's world renowned too. It is, yeah. You so know, many of our companies. You got the and you got the terrible foods. And yeah. Oh gosh, on and on. I mean, many of the companies in town are are have an international presence, and sometimes people don't really understand that either. Certainly, students to think, oh my goodness, if I was involved in Sage, you know, their their ownership is Saint Cobain in Paris. Um, you know, Daikin is in Japan. I mean, there's a there's people that work there that travel to those places to learn more, to get training, to connect with others that they work with on an international stage. So it's pretty fun. Yeah. Last April when we returned from Italy, I was on the plane. A guy next to me was going to Sage here oh, in Faribault. Yeah. How's that for Ireland? Yeah, that's great. And yeah. He was telling me how he comes over here about once a month. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we love to hear those stories. You know, Gordy, we were thinking before the show started that, you know, we had a lot of things to talk about and there's a number that we didn't get to, so I'm always glad that I get to come back. Um, I would like to mention that our Chamber Ag Committee is working on our Farm Business Luncheon and that's coming up in November, on November 17th, and we'll be uh, talking more about that, I'm sure, on the air, and uh, you'll be hearing more about it. But that's a, a w another wonderful event that we are pleased to do that helps us promote the industry of agriculture in our community and how important that is to our economy. And we always bring in an interesting speaker to uh, share some important information with the folks that are there. And, and that's changed a lot over the years, too, that industry. Oh, absolutely. That might be a fun show, although I'm sure I'm sure Jerry handles a lot of that. But there's uh, there's a lot we could talk about on a local level about sure. agriculture as well. And I'd love to come back at some point and, and spend some time talking about the Virtues Project. Um, the chamber has gotten involved in that uh, by connecting with uh, many of the uh, pe people uh, in the community that that love the notion of advancing character development and how important it is not just for students a lot of times we talk about we're going to do this for somebody else and it's that's important we're so pleased that many of our local schools have uh, really taken on this virtues project they're using it in their classrooms and in their uh, programming and really talking about virtues uh, and character development but a lot of times we don't recognize that these are things that we <coughs> all can use and reminders um, to, you know, think with more unity and to act with more integrity and to be more responsible and, um, you know, show courage in various ways that these are some of the things that um, we really 
are really proud of being involved in that Virtues Project. Yeah, George Wickstrom stopped by. He was on our show here talking about that. Yeah, he's been a real leader in that. He and Cindy Diesner and Barb Handel, those are the people that are really leading the way. And um, what, what we're finding from the Chamber's point of view is that uh, there are a number of businesses that really are, fun, are interested in this. And, and what we learned is that they're already doing a lot of things like this. They're already uh, talking about the culture of their workplace and the fact that they, they do care deeply about integrity and responsibility and, and personal character. And uh, that's really gratifying to know that those values are, are shared pretty widely in the community. All right. I've only got a few seconds. How the fall festival go? Oh, it was so fabulous! My goodness, so many people. We want to thank the businesses that uh, welcomed the trick or treaters and all the people who made chili and all the families that came out. I was there with six grandkids and we had so much fun. Oh my gosh! And the paradise haunted basement thing, fabulous. So thanks to all who were involved in that. Now yeah, we were told Monday that there were some kids that had nightmares. Oh, it was scary, <laughs> but fun. <laughs> they did a beautiful job. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Gordy. That concludes today's edition of A Minnesota on KDHLAM Parable, Minnesota. <laughs>